Hi, 7 6 is on nth roots, which would be square roots, but also things like cube roots and fourth roots, fifth roots, seventeenth roots, kind of whatever. Uh, I wouldn't frantically copy this blue stuff, sorry if you already got started, uh, but just want to try to prove a point with that and it's not worth writing it all down. But first thing then is just going back to square roots, been doing those for forever. When you have the little radical sign there, what a square root really is saying is what number times itself or what times what equals the number. So for example, I put down square root of 16. We know that equals 4 because 4 times 4 equals 16. You could write it here if you wanted to. You could say 4 times 4 equals the 16 or really the 4 squared. Uh, cube roots then, same sort of thing, but now it's saying what times itself times itself again equals the number. Or really it's saying what to the third, kind of like this you could say is what squared equals the number. Now it's saying what to the third equals the number. So this here has to be 5 because 5 times 5 times 5 is the 125. Um, one thing that's new in this section is when you have the square root of 16 that we can write that with a radical, but we could also say that's the same as 16 to the 1 half power. Or when we have the cube root of 125, we could say that's the same as 125 to the 1 third. That's going to be one of the new things we want to write then, is in this section, if we have b to the 1 over n, the reason we're picking n is because it's going to be a natural number that we're not going to be doing like 1 over 0.5 or 1 over negative 3 or something like that. But you could say b to the 1 over n, that's going to be the nth root of base b. Uh, it's worth mentioning how to punch that into your calculator. I'll show you how to do that now. All right, we'll do two of these quickly. Uh, that last one I had in the, on the screen, the cube root of 125. Uh, if you press your math button, it's right there, two down below the second. Uh, if you're doing a cube root, you could just pick this fourth option right here. A lot of people arrow down and select it. I'm just going to hit four. Saves a lot of time. Uh, some operating systems won't have the three up above like it shows it right here. Uh, this is one of the newer ones. But either way, it'll work. So Q root of 125. If you want to get out of that, you could press your right arrow to get out of it. You don't need to. But it tells you that the answer is 5. Let's say you want to do something like 4th uh, root. So maybe 4th root of 625. Well, for one like that, you press 4 first, and then go to math. And now, if you look at option number 5, they have this little X in front of the radical sign. That's the one we want to pick. So then it'll either have the 4 and then that symbol, or with this operating system it actually puts the 4 there, then 6, 2, 5, and gives it to you. The other option is just to type them in as an exponent. So for that last one, 625, the fourth root of that, you could say, well, that's the same as 625 to the 1 fourth power. Now, in doing that, you need to be a little careful that you do put parentheses around it, at least with the older operating system you need to put the parentheses around it, like so. And in that case it'll actually show up as a 625, the upward caret parenthesis, 1 divided by 4 parenthesis. This fractional exponents is one of the things that is nicer about the newer operating system, in that if you do have this new operating system, you can just go through and type in your 625, then your exponent key, and now you don't need the parentheses because it's writing it up above. Um, so you could just do one fourth, and then when you want to get out of it, press your out of the exponent, press your right arrow key. All right, the very last part of this section then is looking at well, how many roots does a real number have? We need to break it up into two different categories. One would be like your even powers or your even roots, so square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots. Other ones would be your odd powers or your odd roots. Uh, so this here. Uh, if you have an even power, even root, you can quick throw together a graph, put in your titles. Um, yeah, so this is going to be like our function would be y equals x to some even number. And if you think back to what those are, those are all going to look roughly like a parabola. And the steepness of which and kind of what happens between 0 and 1 depends on what exponent are we talking about? So, ooh, so kind of an ugly parabola there. Shouldn't have changed where my wrist was. Um, over on the odd power, we're going to have y equals x to an odd, which would be a straight line if it's just y equals x to the first, y equals x to the third, y equals x to the fifth. You know, we start 
changing the shape of the curvature a little bit more. But uh, this is going to look like a parabola going up on the right and a parabola going down on the left. So it's going to be curves like that. Now if we wanted to look at these as roots, you could then say that same blue equation would be if we had something like y to the 1 over an even. So my x1 is going to be 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 sixth equals x. So my x value, my value of my x-axis is going to be whatever root of the y value that we're picking. Or over here we could say y to the 1 over an odd power is going to equal my x. All right, let's say we're going to actually try to use this with a number. And I'm going to pick 49 to the 1 half, in which case we're looking at this blue curve here as though it's a parabola, it's a y equals x squared. So 49 to the 1 half, well, so y is my 49. I'm going to take and put a 49 here on my y axis. And we're saying that that to the 1 half power, well, how many x values am I going to get? Well, for that, we want to look at, well, where on our blue curve, where on our parabola are the y values 49? So over here we have a height of 49, over here we have a height of 49. Well, if we're trying to figure out x values, if I have two different spots that have a y of 49, I should have two x values that would go along with that. And one then we know the square root of 49, one of them over here would be 7. So we have a 7 on this side and a negative 7 on this side. And if everything was drawn correctly, it would be symmetrical about the y-axis. So way we could say that then is if you have a positive number to a 1 over even, or in other words, if you have an even root of a positive number, you have two real solutions. Or two real answers. If we take that same exact thing and now say, well, does that work with negatives? If we had, instead of a 49 to the 1 half, a negative 49 to the 1 half, well, if you survive chapter 6, you know that that's going to be giving you imaginary numbers. We don't have any real solutions. And you can see that here with our graph because if we're looking at, well, where on my graph do I have a y value of 49? Well, nowhere does this curve ever hit a height of negative 49, I should have said. So then we could go and write, if you have a negative to the 1 over even, or if you have an even root of a negative number, um, then you have zero real solutions. I could do the same sort of thing with our odd power function. I'm just going to pick the number 8. So we'll say 8. And I'm going to say for a y value of 8, let's just do a 1 -third power. So we're doing a cube root of 8, which we know equals 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Another times another 2 is 8. Um, well, if I were to go through and draw that, maybe I'll just steal my same lines here. Try to anyway. So where my y value is 8, I'm going to come up with one x value here. So now I'd have an x value of 2. So then that would give me 2. And if I would do that same exact thing, okay, so positive x value, positive number to a odd root, is only going to give me one solution because we don't have the graph curving up here on the left. If I would have that for a negative number, should find you get the same exact thing. If I have my negative number, take this top line here and clone it. When I have a negative 8, I still only have one real solution. So for that one, we could just say the odd root of any real number gives one solution. So, so the odd root of any number, any real number, has one solution, or one real solution. That would be it for section 6.